Howdy. This is uh, Olive again, presenting the latest and greatest version of Drawlisp. This is 1.0. This was going to be 0.0.2, but uh, I've unfortunately lost steam on, on this project, so I'm tagging this as the final version, and uh, I won't be working on it for the foreseeable future. Uh, I, I left a lot of things on the docket, but uh, I also got to implement a lot of things in the meantime. So uh, we can start by creating a window. You can see we can now supply a third parameter. This will um, be the size of, of individual pixels, right? So for example, we can write point uh, one, one, right? And you can see this, this point uh, is conceptually a single pixel, but, uh, but now on, on the display, it's displaying as uh, 16 by 16 wide. I, I I don't script these. I should probably figure out how to phrase these better. Uh, we also have this new color literal syntax, uh, which which is much nicer than having to write out what would it be? Uh, color zero, and then I don't know hex codes. Yeah, you can see different number. I can't convert these on the fly with all this pressure. Uh, we can also resize the window, right? This is something that SDL provides, and we could just shrink it like this. Uh, oh, and you can also you can also resize it like this. I didn't know you could do that. I must have added that later and then forgotten about it. Uh, you can also reposition the window. You can see it's just going to this point 500 100 on on my 1920 by 1080 monitor uh, now one exciting feature is transparency you can see we have this fourth alpha parameter and now uh, and now if we were to draw a rectangle for example then then it would it would be slightly transparent and we can also use fully transparent which is uh, this, it, it's magenta, but fully transparent. Uh, and hopefully, if I did my coding right and SDL doesn't have any weird errors, uh, th this should not be observable. I guess unless you use it as a clear color, in which case the transparency is completely ignored. So uh, just as an example, we can have this program. It's uh, going to go from 0 to 9, and that's just going to draw some red rectangles. And if we see that, it draws this interesting pattern. Uh, someone smarter than me can figure out why exactly it looks like this. <laughs> uh, next is something that's quite important for generative art. That is the ability to generate random numbers. So we can generate a random number from 5 to 10. Uh, 5, very random number. 7, another incredibly random number. 8. Right, and uh, this you can use the same parameters as you would in range. So conceptually, it's just sampling one random number from from this range. Right, and we can, uh, for example, clear the screen and uh, well, just paste in this code that I wrote beforehand. Uh, so just three hundred times, we're going to choose a random stroke color with a uh, transparency of 30 or an alpha value of 30 an opacity of 30 uh, and you can see color uh, it can now take a fourth argument and then we're just going to draw a random line in the screen and if we do this then wow yeah it that sure looks like a random assortment of lines uh, and we can also seed the rng right so we could pick a predetermined seed and uh, well, let's see. Let's just skip this draw call so that we can see it instantly. Uh, if we clear it and then draw it, uh, you can see we get also well, difficult to see, but ah, I forgot to seed it again. Okay, there. Now we repeat it over and over, and we still get the exact same result. And if you look, uh, I actually prepared a little screenshot beforehand. Uh, 
I accidentally resized the window so it's not an exact match, but you can see of this little of this little bit that we have uh, I mean it's an identical match so that's a good sign that my uh, that my deterministic seating is actually working correctly which is nice uh, so I think that's just about everything on the uh, graphics side now I can move on to more of the uh, language features uh, so this is the M combinator it's a and if you apply it to itself, um, you get a recursion error. That's the first little detail. I've finally fixed recursion by limiting it. So now the, the program doesn't stack overflow and crash. Uh, now it, you know, prints this nice eval error, prints this nice stack trace. Uh, much more pleasant to debug. Uh, there's also time NS, which gives you the time in nanoseconds since the program start. Uh, so you could divide this by a billion and see, uh, I've been running for 536 seconds. And how many is that in minutes? It's eight minutes, I guess. All right, and then a few more. We have type of. It just returns a, a symbol of, of whatever type it is. Uh, eval, a, a Lisp classic. This just evaluates whatever list you give it. Um, apply, which just... Uh, takes a function and gives it these arguments. Uh, looks similar to fold for this example because addition takes a variadic number of arguments. Uh, it's probably faster than fold since it's all done in uh, built-ins. Uh, next, I finally added that that awful, awful beast um, mutation. So you can see um, this is just a cute little pair syntax. You could also do like cons one, two. Uh, you see, we get the car of C. That's one. The cutter of C, we get two. And now, with magic, we can set car to be uh, 42. And now you can see, instead of one, it's now 42. Set cutter works the same. Ta-da. <laughs> yeah, so um, this is just me giving programmers the the, the tools they, they need to... I don't know, do whatever they want in this silly little playground. Uh, and then finally we have while, which is just a plain loop. Right, so it takes a condition, which would hopefully not be infinite, and then just code to call, and it'll just run that code until the, the condition is untrue, or until the condition is false. And in this case, it will never be false. So it's just going to keep doing this forever and ever until I close the program. <sighs> so, yeah, I think that's everything. Uh, thank you for tuning in to the second and, for the time being, absolutely final uh, Draw Lisp dev vlog demo showcase thing. Uh, thank you so much. Goodbye. <laughs>